Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Lights from Madden Daily and in this video, you're gonna see massive trades that hopefully just saved my CFM season. I'm one and two right now. If you watched my last video, I said I have to make changes to my team if I'm gonna have a shot in this CFM and that's exactly what I do. Now I make these trades in between week four and week five. This is week four right now against the Bears. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my games against the Bears and the Packers and our team as a whole has a lot of pressure. You see the coach talking to media saying, you know, blaming the team, not just Eli Manning. But we have to pull this together and we have to beat the Bears. They're 0-3 in the CFM. But remember, everyone's good in here. So that's not going to be just an easy win. His team isn't great. Brandon Marshall and Brian Urlacher are his legends. But he also has Justin Fields at quarterback. And I see fast break in there with the abilities so that means he's going to be running with his quarterback and he does he's using baltimore's playbook you're going to see some qb wraps you're going to see the quads the empty quads formation running qb blast and things like that check out his superstars one more time Erlacher, brandon marshall justin fields kevin king with one step in deep out zone ko blackwell jalen johnson flat zone ko um again not that many superstars his team isn't as stacked as others in this league but when you're running a glitchy run heavy offense using the quarterback you always technically have that advantage because when you're running with the quarterback you have an extra guy to block for you whether that be the running back or receiver and in cfm running with your quarterback is usually more effective than in mutt because in madden ultimate team your whole team is fast even your d-line as he breaks with the running back right here that's another thing too i can't just think when he's in gun spread that he's gonna run qb rap got to worry about the running back as well. Now, when he's an empty, the only run he can do is with the quarterback. So pay attention to the quarterback while also having to guard four guys on one side of the field, then audibles to gun spread. This time he does run the wrap. Now I'm on the linebacker on the running back side. I quickly realize that if I'm going to stop this wrap, I need to be on the linebacker opposite the running back. That way I can wrap around to get the quarterback. Great read right there as he hits me to the seams now he's not only going to run with the quarterback i gotta worry about the pass too this is not going to be easy going for two right here i'm going to have an underneath yellow and flat zone on the right side he's going to throw a quick rpo and we're going to pick him off so not the best start but i'll take that pick only down six i do get the ball at half so if i score right here i'll take the lead hopefully i get one or two stops this game and i can win it but i gotta be able to stop his running offense you know here on offense going with the trail Saquon Barkley. I didn't make any trades yet. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. I gotta truck that dude. I gotta truck that dude. 16 yard line. Crosser to Darren Waller. And now, red zone opportunity, third and four. Running back is wide open, but I get hit as I throw it. Wow. Fourth down. Do I kick three to make it a three point game or do I try to score? Going with the double trail with the ghost. And I can high point to the tight end, but nope. Going with the trail. Pretty easy right there. Looked like the tight end on that same side on that corner out was also open. Yellow zone kind of really wasn't playing anything. He was in zone coverage. We score. We go up one. Now it's time to stop this scheme. Like I said, I feel confident that I have defense for both of these formations. Great D right there, and we stop the seam pattern. So what I'm going to do against this formation, I'm going to cover through the right side. I'm going to have an underneath yellow on the right, underneath yellow to my safety. Send a free rusher coming in. He can't block out of this. Now I just have to watch the first guy that comes open, especially to that right hash. That's what I take away. Nothing is open, and he gets sacked. Third and 21. Going to pretty much do the same thing if he's going to stay in the same formation. Instead of going underneath yellows, though, I'm going to go with all blues. Probably man up that nickel back on someone, more than likely. And again, send that free rusher. He's coming in. He throws it, and we KO it. We got a bunch of deep zone KOs and pick ours. I'm not really worried about throws to the seams here. I'm going to send an all-out blitz with four deep zones. Free rusher coming in. He blocks the running back. But you can't max protect that a gun spread. And you can't block at a gun bunch quad. So I'm going to be sending a lot of heat this game. Right here, motioning the trail third and goal. I find triangle open for a high point pass. A lot of zone coverage that he's running. And we're exploiting it. So now, do I go for two here? Again, motion the halfback out. Again, wide open. He's in goal line. 
No one's following him. But Eli Manning is just struggling this season. Just an overthrow. That's a pitch and catch. Oh, that's frustrating. It should be a nine point game, six to 15. But instead, we're still in a dogfight. Now I wanna highlight what I do against the gun spread wrap. You see that I'm on the linebacker opposite the running back. And when he runs it, I'm just going to wrap around, follow the, the guard that's pulling and tackle the quarterback. That's the best way to stop the wrap. You gotta be on the linebacker opposite the running back so you can loop around to get the quarterback. Now right there was actually the read option, but here on second and 15, he runs the wrap and I'm doing the same thing. So I just was on the linebacker opposite the running back and I looped around. Here he goes to gun bunch, third and 17. He's gonna try to throw it and again, deep out zone KOs and pick artists. I'm inviting people to throw deep on me because that's where my defense is at its best. First and 10, hitting the post route to Saquon Barkley. And we're moving, we're grooving. First and 10, Bo Jackson is just too damn fast. Got to utilize his speed every which way I can, whether that be running or passing. Here, getting the two-point conversion on the high point corner out to Darren Waller. And again, playing on the linebacker opposite the running back and stopping the QB wrap. I get him to a third and one, but I was not fully committed to stopping the blast. I was there. I had the hole to hit. I didn't take it here. Third and four. We're going to tackle him. Now we are in the fourth and short. Fourth and one. It is the two-minute warning. Check out the adjustments. Again, underneath the yellows to each side. Cover three shell. Heat is going to come in because you can't block nickel over in this formation unless you motion block. Here he throws at my yellow zone. But I don't have any type of KO on him. A short KO. So he gets it. Now, great dot right there. But he goes out of bounds. So third and ten. He's going to try me. Throwing deep to the right. And we say... Give me that huge interception. And now on offense, 39 seconds left. I realize that he's playing match coverage. I'm going to look to hit him with a match beater. Corner out to triangle. Free safety not in good position. Waller breaks the tackle and we are out. 30 seconds left and we are going to run it in. 10, 5, touchdown. Going for two. We'll run a little counter. Trying human joystick on Bo Jackson. That felt really good. 29 to six again running the wrap gets a little bit of space here but just with no timeouts left that's going to be the end of the second quarter start of the third quarter we got the ball again i know that he's in match so i'm going to look to exploit that but that isn't what i wanted to do right there as i get a tip pick i gotta make a play right here look at my free safety i'm using in the box i'm trying to lurk something up that left seam okay so he's in gun spread he audibles to a trip set right. Isolated receiver on the left. I'm going to fake like I'm going to play the running back. And then I'm going to play square. And I pick him. Woohoo! Not going to lie. Been really feeling it with my user lately. Big stop right here. And again, if he's going to start playing more cover four match, I'm going to exploit it. This time hitting the corner out to the right. Breaking a huge game with Hodgins. Now match bomb to the left. Guys wide open. Waller to seal the deal. And we're up 36 to 6. Another sack. Can we end the game right here? Pressure coming in. He throws it up. And we say, give me that one more time. And we're housed. So that is how this game is going to end needed this type of game to try to build some more momentum after losing two straight so now i'm two and two but i know that my team is still not good enough to compete with the best of the best in this cfm for ten thousand dollars so i have to make trades and that is my focal point to start this upcoming week against the packers so yardstick he has the packers really good comp player and also, John Beast is in his division with the Lions. The NFC, in general, is really, really stacked. So I'm looking at this 3-1 yardstick Packers team as a wildcard threat. So I got to win this game. I'm making my trades now. So I make two trades. Here's one of them. I want to get rid of Saquon Barkley. But for this trade, I'm not going to. I'm going to trade Darren Waller, although he has been balling for me. And Darius Slayton, but not just Darius Slayton. I'm pretty much paying $40 to go with Darius Slayton. So the Browns can put Superstar on Slayton. 
could age reduce him by five years to make him 20 years old, and to add 10 non-physical points to his stats, to his route running. So you gotta look at him as a 6'1", 94 speed, superstar with short in, and by next season, this is a two season CFM, he should be one of the best receivers in the league. And as you can see, I'm trading for Ozzie Newsome, 99 overall, 91 speed, so he's faster than Waller. And most importantly, it's not the route run, it's not the speed, it's not the overall, it's the fact that he can get secure protector. So what was happening in that Cowboy game? If I block Ozzy with secure protector, I'll be able to have enough time to utilize Bo Jackson in the pass game. But not just Bo Jackson, as you see on my screen. I want more, I want more speed. So we're gonna look to trade for Warwick Dunn. I'm also gonna get Hudson, Rodney Hudson. And I'm trading Football 88, Saquon Barkley, and Andrew Thomas. See, Football 88, he plays differently than me. He's in shotgun, he has Kyler Murray, he likes to step up in the pocket for his dollar and a lot of outside blitzes. He needs post up. Andrew Thomas, him being over 90 overall, you can put him at center, get post up and secure protector, and now defensive tackles and dollar, anything up the middle is not going to shed right away and you'll be able to take off, you'll have enough time to dot. That's really important for him, not as important for me. The same way as Saquon is actually probably a better running back for him than Warwick Dunn. Dunn is a small back, he's 5'9", he's not going to break tackles as much as Barkley, but he's 98 speed and he has 86 short route run, like 82 mid route run. He could run the routes that I need in jumbo at tight end. In my opinion, those are the two big weaknesses I had on my offense, on my team, is the fact that I couldn't block a tight end without getting shedded by an outside linebacker like 4361, and I couldn't really attack with my left outside tight end, which was Saquon Barkley, because his route run was so poor, and he just simply wasn't fast enough to really be such a home run threat that I need. Now I have two. 98 speed Bo Jackson, 98 speed Warwick Dunn, I still have 89 speed Sterling Shepard, 88 speed Hodgins, and 91 speed, 99 overall Ozzie Newsom, who could run block, pass block, has 99 catch, great route running. Now even though I'm in a heavy tight end jumbo offense, I'm going to have the speed advantage majority of the games that I play going forward. And hopefully that puts me over the top. I feel very confident with these moves. Next time I play the Cowboys, I'm going to have enough to win that game with no issues. No blocking issues, no speed issues, no route running issues. I'm, my run game is going to be better because Ozzie Newsome could actually run block. Games are still won on the field, but I have enough now. No excuses. So like I said, we're going to go secure protector and route technician on Ozzy, unless I want to put red zone threat instead of secure protector if I don't think I need it. Now in this game against the Packers, he's 3-1. and one. I'll show you his team real quick. There's one thing I want to stress with his team. I'm not talking about his two legends, Sterling Sharp and Reggie White. I want you to look at his quarterback. Yes, it's Aaron Rodgers still, but look at his abilities. He only has pass lead elite and dashing deadeye. He doesn't have Hot Route Master, he doesn't have Slinger, but what I'm getting giddy about is he doesn't have Fearless. And if you guys remember Madden in the beginning of the year, like that first MCS tournament where under pressures just ruled the game because no quarterback had Fearless, well guess what ability my defense alignment are going to have. Lawrence Taylor is going to have Edge Threat Elite, Dexter Lawrence I'm putting under pressure and double or nothing on him. And then I'm making one last move. I'm going to buy double or nothing slash edge threat on Kayvon Thibodeau. So I made one more move in the ability shop because I feel like this is a, a game I have to win. Kayvon now is a superstar. And I can put under pressure and either edge threat. I could put pass commit. So you see, putting under pressure on Kayvon. Putting under pressure on Dexter Lawrence. And I put edge threat elite which is under pressure and edge threat and then pass commit on Lawrence Taylor so there really should be no reason I lose this game I gotta be honest like no matter how good yardstick is he's at such a disadvantage that he doesn't have fearless because I'm gonna have my under pressures 
and I'm in a defense nickel over where I can get free rushers coming in, both defensive ends, the DT to shed. So even if he has guys wide open, he would have to max protect in order for guys to not come in free. And if guys come in free, he's going to get under pressure. Look at that throw. I don't think that was under pressure. I think he just uh, tapped the ball by accident. But on third and eight, he tries to throw. And that was an under pressure. I'll tell you that much. I won't say it was a great throw. Even if he didn't get the under pressure ability, it probably was an incomplete. I don't know about a pick. But under pressure lit up. Moreo got the pick. And we start the game off 7-0. And I'm fully expecting that to happen often. Just, just simply doesn't matter my opponent. It doesn't matter who I would be playing. The fact that I'm in my particular defense where I can get free guys in with the under pressure ability and he doesn't have fearless, there really should be no reason that I lose this game. But he's a great opponent. So he is going to fight. He's been fighting. He's 3-1 with this team. And he it's not like he only just now don't have... Hot Rod Master, Fearless, things like that. This is the team he's been playing with. And he does a hell of a job in U-Trips. Right here, he hits me with Watson. I'm realizing that I need to use her that motion. That's what a lot of people like to do in this gun U-Trips formation. Right here, I go to cover two. He's going to throw it up. And he somehow catches that. I guess he has a uh, deep out elite. First and 10, trying to blitz, trying to get my under pressures to register. He blocks it perfectly, and he's going to score. So like I said, I fully expect to win. I fully expect to get a ton of under pressure penalties. But I don't think it's going to be easy. I still have to fight. I still have to do my thing. As Warwick Dunn gets his first touch on the Giants with the kick return. Doesn't get much. Now throwing Ozzy Newsom's first ball. And he should be catching a lot of contested balls. I'm excited to utilize him in the pass game, not just the blocking game. Warwick Dunn on the trail route. Look at that separation with the great short route run. Short in lighting up and 98 speed. It's just I feel like I have so much firepower now. Where when I started this league, I felt like I was at a disadvantage. Now I'm definitely at an advantage. Uh, right here, Bo Jackson. Like I said, I mean, just so much speed. Two 98 speed players, even if they're running backs. But look at this. Post route is wide open, but I'm backing off too far. And I get a pass inaccurate. Not because of under pressure. Really, it's because I'm bad at the game. I shouldn't be going that far back with my quarterback, so I kind of deserve that. Uh, just, you know, hopefully he gets a couple more under pressures here, throwing it. That's an under pressure. So, I mean, every time my defensive ends or DT get close, it's going to be passed. Look, he somehow caught that. Great throw, but I even think that was inaccurate. Right here, going cover two. What is he going to throw? And inaccurate yet again. We pick him off with Gafford. And just that's gonna be the moral of the story guys like it's just he's at there's really nothing he could do if, if my ends or dt get anywhere close to him he's not gonna throw an accurate pass right here sliding with eli manning it's still a 7-7 game so i'm talking as if i'm blowing him out but take advantage of speed baby take advantage of speed bo jackson uh jair alexander's like 92 speed bo jackson 98 speed i really love utilizing the running back on wheels with that speed advantage get to third and goal here he goes with heavy man and i'm just i'm gonna i'm gonna play it safe i want points i want the lead so i'm gonna kick three here i didn't want to throw anything um i didn't want to risk throwing a pick six or anything like that like let me win the game on defense because like i said doesn't matter how good or bad yardstick is i just feel like there's going to be balls that are thrown inaccurate there's just there's nothing he can do with the way that i'm playing like right here it's gonna be a pass that, that's an inaccurate ball that's an accurate ball. Keep going. Just watch those defensive ends light up. Right here, going with cover two on that side. Third and nine. Good adjustment by me. Here, I'm going to send the house. Guy f coming in. Sack. Three minutes, 20. Well, 2.56 left. Fourth and 15. He's going for it. Yet again. Watch. He's going to throw a corner out to the left side. But my ends were lighting up. Inaccurate. Turnover on downs. Here, trail route to Warwick Dunn. He is just so fast, man. He really runs routes like a receiver. Second and goal. High point, Ozzy Newsom. My team is filthy now. I really think I have one of the best teams in the league right now. It's just defensively, I feel really good. I have a dominant defensive line, really good corners. I have so much firepower on offense. The speed advantage. 
I feel really good about this team. As we get one more throw under pressure, pick six, making this 25 to seven back on defense, hitting Aaron Rodgers. 12 seconds left in the second quarter. He throws it up and another pick. And that's pretty much going to do it. I want to test Warwick Dunn though at tight end. Pay attention to the left of screen outside tight end. I'm going to put him on a streak. See if he can blow by his man defender. Lob that bad boy up. Rat catch it. Break the tackle because he does have high break tackle. It's, it's above 90. And we score with no time left in the second quarter. And to start the third, we're going to throw the work done one more time. Testing that Ferrari out. And he is just going to be a problem for this CFM. I'm so excited to continue playing with Ozzy Newsom and Warwick Dunn. Let me know what you guys think of those trades. If you guys enjoyed this video in the CFM, please like the video. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss any uploads from this CFM. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next week of this $10,000 PS5 Pro Madden Player CFM. It's Lights from Madden Daily. Later.